Hi, I'm David Maneri. Thanks for joining us for another edition of It Happened in Cambridge. I'm at Mount View Cemetery in Cambridge Gold, and this is where Margaret Hamilton McCabe is buried. Margaret Hamilton, her maiden name, grew up in Gold, started working with the Galt Reporter and rose to the highest ranks of the Canadian business establishment, becoming the first female president of Thompson Newspapers. This is her story. When I think of Margaret Hamilton, uh, I can't help but think of her husband, St. Clair McCabe. I met the two only once, and it was for lunch. Uh, we had a, a great chat that day. Uh, I took a few pictures. Uh, the story of Margaret Hamilton McCabe is a story interwoven with the Galt and then later Cambridge Reporter. When I met Margaret and St. Clair McCabe for lunch, uh, it was in, in 2003, I think, but it was after the reporter had closed. Uh, the reporter was owned at that time by Torstar, and they decided uh, they had also owned the the local papers, the, the Kitchen Record and the uh, Cambridge Times, and, and of the three, uh, they decided to close the, the oldest newspaper in Canada, the Cambridge Reporter, 157 years. It closed, uh, it was September 19th, I think, uh, night, uh, 2003, and it was a Friday. And the editor, Kevin Swayze, had asked me to write a kind of an obituary for the reporter. Uh, he called me up and said, listen, Dave, the bad news, I was a, a history columnist for the paper at the time. I had been a sports reporter years earlier. He's, he said, uh, could you write a, a, a piece about the history of the reporter? And I said, oh, that was bad news about the reporter. I'm very sad to hear that. Um, how long did I have to write this piece? And he said, two days. Uh, the paper was closing on Friday, so there was very little warning for the staff and, uh, and for residents. Uh, it was a cultural institution, that paper. Um, and uh, so it was, it was more than just a, it was a sort of a local paper record that was closing. It was, uh, it was something that was ingrained uh, within the very fabric of, of the people of, of, of Cambridge. Margaret Hamilton and, and St. Saint Ma Saint Clair McCabe and their son, uh, who had gone to school, I think, to law school with uh, Terry Williston, um, they were there for lunch that day. It was, a, it was just a, a tremendous uh, time to, to chat with them. Um, and uh, Margaret uh, and St. Clair told me about their early days as a reporter, how they had gone with Kenneth Thompson uh, back to Toronto. When Roy Thompson uh, was building his newspaper, what became a, a tremendous international newspaper empire, he started out modestly enough in North Bay. He bought the paper there. He, he then bought the Woodstock paper. And the, the, the Galt Reporter was the third paper in his what later became an empire. And it really was an empire. And Thompson became Lord Thompson of Fleet uh, later on. He was, he was uh, notorious as being a spendthrift. Um, and, uh, and maybe that's a, one of the reasons for his success. But he sent Kenneth Thompson to, to the Gulf Reporter to learn the newspaper business. So young Kenneth Thompson came here. He lived uh, for a time at the at, at room and board at the YMCA at Queen Square. He also lived up on an apartment uh, just near Oak Street um, and uh, in Spruce uh, on on Main Street. When you go up to Main Street Hill past Central uh, School, uh, there, there's an apartment building on the left hand side, it's still there. And and he had a room in there. And uh, Sil Eccles, who lived just down the street, a school teacher at, at GCI, would famously talk about. Uh, Kenneth Thompson, the man destined to become the richest man in Canada and one of the, I think at one time he was about the 11th richest person in the entire world. And Ken, young Ken Thompson would go across to the little corner store and, and buy one egg for breakfast. Not a, not a dozen, like most people would, but one egg uh, when he needed it for breakfast. here for a few years. Learning the ropes, becoming ingrained in the community, knowing, learn, uh, curling and, and getting to know people, and two of the people he got to know best were, were Margaret uh, Hamilton and St. Clair McCabe. Margaret Hamilton grew up on uh, Blair Road, not far from the corner of Blair and Blenheim. There's an old stone house there, and that house, uh, it, 
looks like it might be the, the first house on that side of town. It wasn't, uh, as she told me that day. That was the second house. The first house was actually across the street and just down the road a little bit. It's a white house today. That was the oldest house uh, on the west side of the hill there of Galt. Uh, the Hamilton house was the second house, that stone house. And um, although I don't know for a fact, I, I, I think she would have gone to Dixon Public School, which wasn't far away, and uh, then uh, Galt Collegiate. And, uh, but what a remarkable uh, businesswoman she became after going to Toronto. Um, she rose through the ranks of the Thompson organization as, and helped the Thompson organization grow in stature internationally, as did St. Clair McCabe. I mean, they were two of the key people uh, throughout uh, their, their careers that helped Thompson newspapers and Thompson International grow so profoundly, and which, which helped make Kenneth Thompson one of the richest men in the world. And uh, they were his trusted uh, advisors, and, uh, and, and they both rose to the... In fact, when Margaret Hamilton retired, she retired at the very peak. She was the, the president and the chief operating officer of Thompson Newspapers, which is saying something. It was a male-dominated business world, and certainly the newspaper business uh, was, was dominated by males. And, and yet Margaret, through her own intelligence and, and sheer ability, uh, rose to become president. And she was the first female president of Thompson Newspapers. When we had lunch together, she, she heard that I was a writer and that I had written a book and, and uh, I was working on another one. And that book later became The, R the River and the Railroad. It uh, was sort of a semi-autobiographical, fictitious account of a couple 13-year-old boys who, who, who see a murder um, get into a bit of trouble and and want to hop, hop on the train the, the Canadian Pacific and Barry's Cut and, and head down to, to uh, uh, Florida. Anyway, she told me the story of uh, the pants burglar and I just love the, the sound of that, the pants burglar. And she said the pants burglar's barn. And those words together, I'd never forgot those. And, and she said that's a story that I should really um, hear. When she was young, and I think during the Depression years, there was a local bandit, a local prowler, who would break into people's houses and steal the men's pants. Because quite often, uh, the men would leave their wallets in the back pocket of their pants, and it would be thrown over a, a chair or something. And, and so he was, this burglar, unknown, was famous for stealing men's pants. He didn't take jewelry and other things. He, he took, took the, these men's pants. Eventually he was found out and, and, and the pants were discovered and they were discovered at a barn on the river flats toward Blair. Uh, that hence became known as the Pants Burglar's Barn because that's where all these pants and discarded wallets were. And uh, so thanks to Margaret Hamilton, I incorporated that, that story, the legend of the Pants Burglar and the Pants Burglar's Barn into the river and the railroad. Uh, and it was great to chat with them and hear about the early days of the reporter. Uh, and they had worked there, it would have been half a century before I was there. So they they, they, they had such a, a grasp of the history there and, and having worked with Kenneth Thompson so closely over the years. Uh, she lived to be 101 years old. She and, and, and St. Clair McCabe died. St. Clair McCabe died just a few years prior to her. They were devoted to each other throughout their lives. And um, St. Clair McCabe, uh, I think he was 97 when he died, but they have a beautiful stone at Mount View Cemetery with the, the, the McCabe and the Hamilton name on it. That's the story of Margaret Hamilton. Thank you for joining us for another edition of It Happened in Cambridge.